make a homemade Bisquick recipe. My dad uses Bisquick quite a bit. And right now during the thing, I can't find any anywhere. And dad uses, dad uses it more than anybody. I don't actually use it, but he makes like pancakes and waffles and stuff. So I like to have some on hand for him so he can make his own breakfast in the morning. Cannot find it anywhere. However, I experimented with a recipe last week and it worked out really well. And dad said he couldn't tell the difference. So I'm going to show you guys what I did. So if you want to make your own baking, like a dry baking mix at home, then this is a good way to do it. So let's try it out. So the first thing you need is eight cups of an all-purpose flour. Next, you need a third of a cup of baking powder. Next, we need two teaspoons of salt. And then we're gonna have two tablespoons of sugar, but since my father is diabetic, I'm going to use basically Splenda. It's easier than the one that eats this anyway. So two tablespoons of Splenda or a sugar. And what I do now is I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick mix, get all of that combined. Again, it's just the dry ingredients. Once you have the dry ingredients combined, we're going to basically add a cup of shortening, which normally I would try to get the butter flavored shortening, but I don't have any of that and it's hard to get, so. Actually, going to eyeball this because I feel like this would be a pain in the butt to measure. So, we're going to eyeball a cup. It's a 15 ounce can, so I mean, it's pretty much the rest of this whole thing in here. What I've got left, and that should be plenty. I never cooked with this before this. I know that what people used to whip fried chicken with this stuff. I remember my grandmother having it, but modern cooking, I don't ever really see it. But we're not in modern times anymore. We're in a weird limbo area, so I'm going to cook with whatever makes this more shelf stable. And what I'm going to do, I'm only going to do a small mix. <laughs> Not like that. Just to kind of get it in there. It's not going to mix well that way, but I at least wanted to get it in there. And what you kind of have to do at this point is mix it with your hands. Because you want it to be sort of clumpy, but not overly mixed, so I'm going to take the beater off and I'm just going to get my hands in here and hand, if you have like a, what do they call it, a dessert, when you mix the butter in with flour, what is that, whatever that tool is called, I don't do a lot of baking, well, I didn't used to do a lot of baking, I'm starting to do more baking now, but you kind of just want it to be a little clumpy like that. It's not wet at all, I mean it's, but you want to really kind of mix it in there. And I just kind of grab it and squeeze and really try to just get it generally mixed. Break up those clumps of that shortening. And this is a basically it. Once I get this mixed in together, I'm just going to stick it in a Tupperware container and it'll sit in the pantry for about three months. Um, if you want to put it in the refrigerator, six months. If you want to put it in the freezer, maybe like a year. But once this 
gets kind of broken up and mixed in here. That's it. You use the same directions you would for normal Bisquick, which I think Dad has, yeah. Basically, if you want to make pancakes with this stuff, it's a cup of milk, two cups of the baking mix, and two eggs. And that's your basic pancake mix. If you want to do waffles, it's still two cups of the mix, but you add uh, one and a third cups of milk and two tablespoons of some sort of oil. We always use avocado oil. This actually feels kind of cool. It's almost like a Play-Doh, or maybe like, you know, the, the sand that we used to play with as kids, it just, I mean, it feels kind of cool. It's almost like a stress ball, really. I just like the feel of it, I don't know why. And then if you're making Bisquicks, biscuits with the Bisquick mix. You just would do like two and a quarter cups of this stuff and I don't know, two thirds cup of milk, something like that. And that would give you a biscuit mix. So it's very universal. I just don't make much bread stuff. I say that and I'm about to make cookies after I do this. But that is your basic biscuit baking, dry baking mix. So there you go.